Christ. What is good? We're back. We're ready to come at you with a little super flex tight end premium mock draft. We got a fresh crack. Cinco de Mayo was a few days ago. Just watched Coco. Um, oh, my son is obsessed with Coco. Literally every day. My two-year-old's too young. He didn't like it. A lot of scariness. <laughs> oh, no. a cl- our, our anniversary is also on the 6th. I, sip, call, I kept calling like Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> Well, your, daughter, got... <laughs> your, your daughter's not a friend of the stylings of Ernesto de la Cruz? Oh, uh, yeah. The skeletons, I think. She, and there's a lot of drama. You know, I thought it was fantastic. I teared up at one point. I thought it was a great... Oh, that scene at the end when the when they showed the grandmother? Don't give it away. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been out long enough. Yeah. So. It's been out for a while. No spoilers here. <laughs> what are we doing today? No one cares. Got a super flex tight end yeah. premium mock <laughs> draft. Got my guy, Matt Foreman, over here. You can find him on Twitter, at Fat Mormon. Got old... It's two T's. Uh... Jason on the ones and twos. How you doing? You can find him at, uh, what's your Twitter handle? I don't know. At Jay at, Wayne's World? At Jay Wayne's World. Just hit all us right. up on the FF Dynasty. Make sure you give us that subby. That's all I care about on the YouTubes. Even um, if you're just listening on the podcast, go over to the YouTubes, hit the subby button. <laughs> Appreciate you're this, you. If you're on those YouTubes, if you're on the uh, podcast, five star would be much appreciated. All that stuff, kind of stuff really, uh, really helps us out. So. We did this mock draft. We did it with our patrons and us three and Big Co. It's about a week old. We did it like right after uh, the NFL draft, but we had a guest and some other things. So uh, it's about a week old. So I think there uh, might be a few addendums on what you may <laughs> or may not do here. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty. I think it holds up still. No, I nailed it every pick. Yeah. Well, it just speaks to that. You know, that was a Monday. We were still. You know, developing some opinions, and we'll continue to develop those opinions and thoughts as we kind of go forward, and and more information is brought to light, and all that kind of stuff. So it's okay to to change a little bit. No, it's uh, not. No, as, stick as, concrete as takes. We move Nobody forward. remembers what you said a week ago, anyway. If you want one of those shirts that he has on, you can go to RevelryBrewingCo.com and uh, go ahead and scoop one of those up. Another way to support your boys if you want to do more than the uh, subby and the five-star. And, of course, you become a patron uh, at patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty and hit us with a $5 holler. You get a Discord. You get to be in mock drafts. You get to ask us questions. You get uh, special podcasts, all that kind of stuff. So We better get this mock started. We're two minutes and 46 seconds in. Someone's going to be yeah, real mad. I, mean, I wasted three minutes of my, life. of my life for the stupid intro. There's timestamps in the bottom for your pleasure. Settle down, Her. awesome sauce. 26. Yeah. <laughs> His name's probably Brad. All right. 1-1, one, one, Brees Hall. Everybody's down with that. Yep. Hold on. I, think for the I don't think there's really too much to debate there. It's Brees, and you know we had a, we had a draft that we shared with you the last time we were all on air that started right after the draft. We took Brees one one. Is there any scoring setting where you wouldn't take Brees one one? I don't know if there May. is. Enlighten me. Mm-mm. Okay, I was just curious. I I, I don't think there yeah. is. I was just yeah. Um, all right, carry on. So then Kenny three sticks yeah. comes in at, at the one two. Um, FFPC went off this. Uh, weekend, which is also if anybody from FFPC is listening, which I'm sure you're not. Like, can we stop? <laughs> Doing the drafts on Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, like, that's bullshit. Your key demographic is 30-year-old men. Like, and some people pay a decent amount of money. Now, maybe those guys aren't married, and maybe the guys who run this hey, place they, they, just they, hate mothers. Hey, yeah. I don't know. A lot of those guys still live in their mother's basements, though, so that's a that's a, that's a good point. Well, right. If you're not married, you live in your, in your mother's basement playing fancy football. <laughs> you know you need Mother's Day off. There's no other option. My brother's 40 and, and does all right and still does not live in his mother's basement and crushes and really has a good time. Sometimes I'm a little jealous of him. But then on those nice moments where, you know, you're having the family thing and... Uh, <laughs> um, so, kidding. so Kenny Walker, one, two, that was pretty much across the board on FFPC. It was, you know, the two running backs going. Not going to get too much argument from me. Some people may argue that... that Kenneth Walker is not going to get the volume and not going to catch enough passes to warrant the return on the one, two. I just, you know, if, if that's the case, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there is penny. There's penny for a year. Hasn't been the picture of health necessarily. He was brilliant down the stretch. Been watching a lot of premier league uh, soccer. So 
brilliant down the stretch. Brilliant. <laughs> um, it's like Kenny. Oh, Pickett. it's wonderful. <laughs> So I don't have I don't have any problem with with Kenny Walker. Kenny here. Pickett plays in the I'm a Premier big, League. I'm a big Kenny Walker guy. Jason's a big Kenny Walker guy, and you are not so. What would you do at one two then? I'm probably taking my I'm probably taking my favorite wide receiver. Who? I'm probably taking Burks at one or two. Okay. I mean I can't I can't necessarily argue with you. Um, I you wish, need the running back, man. I the wish running you would back. Is, the running backs. That's why I would argue. It's just it's the running back, and he is an elite talent. Like, I love the talent. I love the player. So, I'm going to try and overlook anything like not him not having a quarterback and Penny being there. You know, I'm just. So, he's, so he's playing behind but doesn't play third downs and he's still going to get points. The dude is a freak and he's oh, going to okay. be good in the NFL. Okay. I'm excited about taking him. I need a running back, man. I need a running back. So, they'll, they'll be down, but we know Pete will still run it in an Oh, that's game a good script. point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. He's going to run um, 40 times whether he's down. And, and don't sleep on Kenny catching ball. I just need a couple yeah, catches, I man. I just need a couple catches a game. It'll be fine. Yeah, just just a few. Just sprinkle a few with Just two? two? Two or three. Yep, that's yep. all I need. Two, three. I think you're asking for a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if, if Penny's still around and they're, and they're splitting stuff up, which, you know, Pete Carroll doesn't care about. Don't forget about the ghost, go, the ghost of Chris Carson's neck. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm too too worried about no, that. Not either. I, don't, I kind of don't even want him to go back on the field because I like the guy. Like, just call it a day. Yeah. Um, he loves the game though. Yeah. But hey, is what it is. If you want to take Burks one two, I, I we didn't. We had an opportunity to take Kenny Walker one two. We traded back to one six, netted uh, a Mooney, and still picked at one six so you know i i had since left that draft and i'm bummed that i don't have any kenny walker but uh you know you needed you start three wide receivers in there um so hey you had to do what you had to do you got a what i think is probably locked in as a wide receiver two uh in mooney uh most weeks 140 targets last year i don't think you're gonna see probably any less than that no. fields is locked on him even when it when Robinson was there, so I, I've been doing a lot of Mooney politicking, and, and when I'm trying to trade, he's kind of a guy that I'm looking to see if I can get involved in trades because it doesn't seem like everybody's quite up on the Mooney train as maybe I could be, and I just feel like if, if you need a decent flex starter or have to start three wide receivers, it's a decent target uh, for just targets uh, in yeah. general. Yeah. So um, and then Kenny Pickett goes here at 1-3. Not for you. You're no, out. No, it's too soon. Right? right, too soon. I guess if you need a quarterback, and Still. this this he's gonna start. It seemingly. I don't. I, I, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna get the chance to start right off the rip. Right. And I just feel like they. I don't know. Maybe they. I don't. I mean, I, maybe not right off the rip, but he'll probably see time this year for sure. And he is the the future. What if that. Mitch comes and lights the world on fire? I'm mm. not. I'm not. There's. A, there's. I'm not saying it's gonna <laughs> happen. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, maybe it lights the world on fire. Maybe he like he go. He prefers Mitchell. Whatever. Sensitive about that. Trubisky. That's part Mr. of my itch issue with him. Mr. Trubisky has has some decent games. I mean, they have some talent there. They got a decent defense. They can't stop the run, but yeah. I mean, I I I feel like Kenny Pickett's probably going to come in and take command. And if you need if you need the starter and you need the the, the chance at a starter, that's your best shot at it. And you know, Kenny played some pretty good football down down the stretch. He's him and Matt Canada are familiar with one another, um, which is the OC in Pittsburgh. So I, I, I guess I don't necessarily hate it. It's not it's not necessarily for me. I got to get past probably the top six or seven before I want to take Kenny Pickett. But if you need a quarterback, I you know I can't be like oh, absolutely not. There's no way you can do that. I've I've kind of seen him go everywhere from this range, from one three to to you know one seven one eight. It doesn't seem to make it much past that in any super flex draft that I've been in. I would rather send a future second or third ish value for Jared Goff than draft Kenny Pick in the first round. Mm. All right, what are your thoughts there? Maybe maybe here at the one three. You know, okay. I'd rather. I think. I think. I don't think I can take Pickett until. I just don't see the upside. I just don't see the upside in Pickett. I, I mean, I can't take him until one seven. You know, I got to see those four run, wide receivers probably go off the board. I probably got to take a swing at them. I, I mean, think for me in this draft, it would probably after the one at the one hundred eight is what. I'm so probably debating. Olave, I'm probably debating Sky, Sky Moore or Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Okay. Hey, do what you got to do. Start probably probably the only quarterback that'll end up going in any first round. Oh. I was actually when 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 things kicked off, 
we do a couple of rookie drafts right after the draft, not by design because it's other people's <laughs> leagues. Um, and then obviously FFPC is always right around this time. So gotten a feel for it. And I was actually was surprised when Kenny Pickett started going up there and I didn't think that I would be okay with it, but I, I guess I, I'm not, I'm not, I will say we were on the clock at one, two and that wasn't a thought. So, um, but to each their own, if you need if you need a guy, you need a guy. I, I think there is probably some, some Kirk D cousins ish, uh, which, you know, if you need it, that's a, that's a, that's a good QB two. Sure. For your super sure. Fast league. If you if you could promise me he was gonna be Kirk D. Cousins, then I'm fine. But he's Kirk. But he has legs. Three, but he's got athleticism that Kirk doesn't have. So like there is there is a little bit. Yeah, more I mean, of, I mean, if you could tell me he's gonna end up every year between QB twelve and QB eighteen every year, then that's fine. But yeah, I just, which I, th- I think there's a, a, a range of outcomes where that's reasonably likely. He's played a lot of ball and he got better and finally surrounded by some talent and and takes off. You can look at that. The uh, eight yards in the ACC championship game. <laughs> eight yards. Hey, sometimes you have a bad game. Eight yards. Lit, lit it up the rest of the season, though. So. Oh no, 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 that was like that was like a sophomore season. Oh okay. Hey, he beat Clemson this year. So Ooh. did a lot of teams. <laughs> no, just three. One of them was the national championships or champions. So. Ooh. And we took. We almost. We had him. We like. We were right there. Like you never had him. <laughs> We were, you never we, had your car. If we wouldn't, if we, if if the dude wouldn't have <laughs> threw the pick six, what's his name? DJ Uyunglele. Uyunglele. If he's your starter next year, you're in trouble. I, th- I think he's probably going to yeah. be the starter. So Drake London at one four. I, I, that's fine with me. That's, I can't. Is that the first quarterback I, I, off the, I, I, or first for a wide receiver off the board? That's for you fine. Guys? It's fine. I, I I I wouldn't do that, but I mean that's we, fine. We had this talk during the rookie tiers that we did right after the draft, and and you know I think we. Both went Burks first, but I'm like contemplating whether that's what I really want to do or not. You know, I I I'm fine with any three of these dudes. Uh, I'm fine. With, actually, I'm fine with any four of those. I, I guess you could yeah. make a, you could make an argument for receivers. London, Wilson, Burks, and Will, and Williams. Yeah. For me. So and Wilson, I wouldn't hate any of them. Wilson's next, and Big Co took him, who is sometimes on the show. Uh, <laughs> and me and Big Co are in a lot of FBC drafts together, and we did some trading around in this first round, and. I don't think that Big Co would take Garrett Wilson here anymore. I think he would uh, almost you put almost a hundred in Big Co's mouth. Almost a hundred because I, I almost had this conversation, the exact conversation with him, not have anything to do with this today in in a different uh, setting. Setting and and he said Burks over over Wilson uh, pretty consistently. So I think he would probably swap those two uh, if if he was here right now. To say that, and sometimes Big Co likes to likes to not take his favorite guy in a mock to see how far they would fall. Yep, yeah, right. you know? yeah that's that a makes good sense. strategy when you're mocking so you don't fuck it up. I mean, I mean, did he think Burks is going to make it back to him at two two five? <laughs> no, I mean, obviously you're not worried about who's making it back to you. In, I, I think in the this, mock. I think the NFL draft just popped off, and he was like, "Yeah, give me give me Garrett Wilson, um, and let's see what happens." But I think he would swap it. I, I think honestly, I think I'm okay with that swap as well. I I, I would probably put. Wilson and in and, and FFPC drafts, pretty much always consistently the last of these guys to go. And sometimes Jamison Williams uh, above uh, Garrett Wilson. I don't know. That I, I'm still taking Garrett Wilson above Jamison Williams. Um, but I would, I would probably push Wilson down uh, to the back end of that tier, whereas I, was, I liked him probably at the top of the tier to start this whole process off. I just – the Jets. It's the Jets, and can we, can we support – Everything that's going on there, it's the I, Jets. I'm not 100 percent sure. Whereas Burks and London should just be able to, even if it's a bad situation, get get fed pretty handily without anybody really interfering too too much. Did you know the Jets' last 4,000 yard passer with was Joe Namath? <laughs> no. And the Bears, no Chad Pennington and in the there? Bears have never had one. Did Chad just not play enough games? I feel like Pennington was was decent. He had there a noodle for a arm though. And then then he had those shoulder injuries. And, Really went downhill, but there was some decent Pennington in there for a minute. Um, but yeah, soft arm though. Um, so then Jamison Williams goes next. Anybody have any problem with that? Nope. Taking anybody over Jamison Williams? Great nope. pick, great value on Jamison Williams at one seven. I would probably cons- I, I would cons- I would think long and hard if it would have been Wilson or Williams there. Okay. Didn't we we traded up to get one seven? Um, I think it might have been one eight because well maybe no, it was, it was one, seven one seven because one seven. Kenny Pickett just happened went at one six four. I think I think 
Wherever they he went in, in the draft that we were doing, he pushed Jameson Williams was the guy, the odd man out who got pushed down to the last of that kind of tier that we that we all seemingly kind of like. Mm. Um, and we traded back. We traded. We had two twenty three first. We traded a twenty three first um, and MVS basically uh, to get up in there to get Jameson Williams for this year and, and still have a twenty three first. And we're kind of in a little bit of a rebuild, yeah. um, so we have an opportunity to gain more first throughout this year and the, the thoughts were like hey we're not going we're not starting the season negative first for next year but you know we were plus first and now we but we do have jameson williams which i think in a year we'll be probably pretty excited that that we have for him sure. there. And, and at any point could flip him probably for for a first plus yeah he'll definitely hold, he'll definitely hold his he'll, his value is insulated with his draft capital throughout the whole year even if he doesn't play a single down right so you know seeing that tier break kind of come into fruition and seeing that somebody was taking a little while on the clock tried to hop in there we made it work and, i think i think i think i'm kind of on the fence whether i want to put a lave at the bottom end of that tier or not okay so i think i want to like he's definitely at the bottom maybe he's in a tier by himself but i think you got to put a lave in that tier just because yeah, I, I didn't. I wasn't in love with the situation at first, but I'm 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 talked myself into it a whole lot more, um, and now it seems like maybe there's even some Michael Thomas issues going on that yeah. they're not sure if they're even going to have him. Yeah. Um. So, I would personally, I would have, I would take Sky more over Olave, pretty much every time. Um. Okay, and, I, I would and I would I would have a tear break between Jameson Williams and Olave, for me. Okay. Um, so. I think I, I think it, I think that's I think it's I think it's close. I feel so much better about Jameson than I do Olave. That that's just what I uh, you know. I can feel it down in my plums. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would mean, definitely I mean, have why, to have I mean, a break why do you there. say that? I mean, I'm just curious why you think that. I don't know, man. I, it feels like there's so much more juice with Jameson yeah. Williams. Like he just is a game was, record. He, game there breaker, was just time after which, time. Oh, not that Olave can't do that for sure, but. It's just different with Jameson. I don't know why, and 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 he's not just that. He's, sec- he he's definitely sexier. I will say that. Right. I don't think. I think Olave is going. to... I mean, I think Olave's could, floor might be a wide receiver. I mean, a wide receiver three. You yeah. Could, you could. You could. You can certainly make the argument that they could be uh, interchangeable. I guess. I don't know. Uh, they're interchangeable. For, I'm just saying they might be. I think they're in the same tier for me. I think Olave is at the bottom end of that yeah. tier. I mean, as far as like what you could see as a projected usage. A little bit, maybe, but I, I just feel like Jamison Williams was just the guy that you were always marking up, and at some point he got you, and there's really nothing you could do about it. And just time after time after time broke open games. Now, yeah, you could say he had a transfer, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just he think, transferred and blew it up. I, I mean, just I, think I, about this a year ago. If you would have said you would have had Jamison Williams over Chris Olave, right. be like, who the fuck is Jamison Williams? Right. And Chris Olave was going to be a first rounder last year. Yeah. Then, came back yeah. so yeah you know those are all things you got to like about olave uh, but i'm not going to put any hate in jameson williams because he had a transfer like we've seen we've talked about this and seen it a million times like just because you had a transfer or or a system or a head coach or whatever was not using players to their full potential and how they should be i don't think should be held against them at all it's such a dumb argument to me just, that people all, make it's, it's all urban meyer's fault right <laughs> yeah i mean joe burrow is yeah. awesome and and Haskins started over him. Justin Fields had to transfer. Jamison Williams right here. Like all these guys transferred and crushed. Justin Fields broke my heart. Yeah. He was initially committed to Penn State before he mm. committed to Georgia. Mm. Yep. The they, we, were the, we were the first to offer him. He stuck with us and then right in the back. Mm. Well, it didn't work out. And at then Georgia. he transferred and then to Ohio he really State. Really got you again. Yep. <laughs> the wow. old double whammy. Mm. Yep. All right, so Sky Moore goes next. I think that's you know I think a lot of people could could bump Sky even above either a Wilson or a Jameson or a Lave. I'm sure I, I saw some of that. Um, so you know some people are bumping him up for the for the landing spot, and and there was some hype with Sky Moore pre-draft that he was the wide receiver two three four. Uh, yeah. From from you know some you know constituents out there. Uh, Prognosticators so, even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm up next. Um, I took George Pickens um, over Christian Watson. I feel like, again, if I'm taking a shot on one of those two guys, I'm going to take the guy who was a five-star, played in the SEC, um, and just I like his game a little bit more and was able to see more of his game and, and can play you know, short, medium, and deep. 
Yeah. Whereas Christian Watson, I wasn't able to see a whole lot of that game. Seemingly maybe a little bit raw. Now Pickens is maybe a little bit more less of a I, – I, I get it. Like Christian Watson is walking into a potentially awesome opportunity. Um, but we've talked about this in another video and uh, multiple times. Just, you know, there, there's a lot of different things that make me – be paused with Christian Watson, but I'm okay. With like at this 111, 112 turn, if you want to say Christian Watson, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would go Pickens over Watson too. I if, think I got to do that as well, but I, I, I don't mind the Watson pick right there though. No, I think he's, I think he's, I think he's the next pick for me. Well, you hate <coughs> John Dotson. No, but I'm, that, that's I'm who start, you would go right. So if case. I can, so if I can move ahead here to after Watson, I think I would take Dotson at 112 in this in this situation. Okay, I, I would take Dotson over Watson. Um, and still probably be okay with Pickens. I could actually take Dotson over Pickens. Um, uh. The more that I've sat here and thought about it and went through that scenario, um, I do like what George Pickens offers, but it is it is a little bit of a of a projection. Whereas at least Dotson's was there was a decent amount of production uh, to go along with it. And you know, like we said, we've said it a couple times. Terry and Curtis both could, there could be a, a pretty quick situation where he is their their number one guy and. Maybe they have a different quarterback. I don't know. Well, old Riverboat came out in the last couple of days and said that Dotson's going to play on the outside and they're going to have Samuel on the inside. Yeah, for as long as Samuel's. <laughs> yeah, for what? Around. Two, two, three quarters. And apparently they need to put Gibson in the slot too because oh they're just, God. I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. Uh, but yeah, so James Cook goes at uh, 112. Um, to me, I understand it. I can understand taking the shot there, but like the Christian Watson and the James Cook, those are the, those are the guys that I wanted to shoot at in the second round for the upside plays. And now Did I'm the, being forced into first round picks with those guys. Like there's a real situation where James Cook is it, it's really hard to get in your lineup every week. Yeah, like, he, he could be James White. Right. Which isn't a bad play, right. but I mean, am I, do I really want to take him at the end of the first round? No. He's probably got more juice than James White. Definitely. I'm just For saying. Sure. Maybe they play less running back games over there. Maybe he does take stuff away from Singletary and, and kind of get the lion's if, share of what goes on in the running back room over there, which isn't that much, right? right? But, I mean, but maybe they want to throw him some, a bunch of passes. Sure. I could, he's definitely going to be the, the, the pass-catching running back. But How many catches is that going to exactly. yield him, though? You yeah. know? Which right. We haven't seen a, a, an amazing it's, pass catcher over there in the running back room. We, we have had No, they had TJ Yeldon. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, there's you Diggs laugh. and people you like laugh. Gabe Davis and 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 Crowder, and then they took another wide receiver that that a lot of people like in uh, Khalil Shakir. Shakir from from He's Boise fun. State. Finally watched a little um, bit of him. So it's just like he'd really have to get in there, and they'd have to like forcefully throw a lot of passes, seemingly to James Cook, to be startable, especially somebody that you're taking in the first round. Like that's you're counting on an RB one. Like I feel like you're trying to draft an RB one at that point, or, or at yeah. least low, like high end RB two, and it's like he. I feel like maybe on his best games, you're hoping for high end. I feel RB2. like at that point, I'd almost rather take a swing at Willis. On in Superflex? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think some people would argue that they don't like the draft capital. I don't give a for, shit for about no, the draft Willis. capital. There's no way a third round quarterback. No, never. Can not, be good. not even a pick 199. Mm -mm. There's four of them. That's about it. That's the all it will ever be. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know about you, you guys. Also, if, if I don't know if you feel the same way about Cook or not. I, I I like I think he's being Cook, forced into that spot. Yeah, it's too much, right? So we all agreed Dotson should be there at the one twelve, yeah. and then you know who else? Willis. I'm fine with taking Willis over James yeah. Cook and Superflex. I think anybody guys, else. I think you guys might take Spiller too. Would you guys take Spiller over Cook? Um, I would like to. I don't have to. No, you yeah, don't have right? to. Yeah. But I'm, so I'm I trying to find good, somebody. That's a good to, clarification that you would you could trade back, right? And 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 still get Spiller, but personally, I would much rather have Spiller than than Cook and and gain some capital to to, right. to move around in this draft. I mean, I could take David Bell over James Cook. How yeah, do you feel about that? David Bell feels like he's going to be an awesome PPR asset for a while that no one likes. You could talk me into it. I mean, I guess I people don't, like him, but I mean, I think gun to my head, I probably do that too. I just, I just Cook just doesn't seem anything more than just. Just a change of pace satellite back. It seems with, a lot of fun, though. It seems like a it does, fun It does swing. seem like a lot of fun. You, it just seems like, like you, well, I don't know which one of y'all said it, but he's just really being crammed into this first yeah. round because of lack of anything, anything else going yeah. on. And it's and Buffalo. It's and we're so Cook's excited. fucking brother. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that right. was Dalvin Cook's brother? His second round. His last name's Cook, and he right. went yeah. to the Bills. So it's like, yeah. this has to be awesome. And nobody likes the running backs that are in the Bills. Yeah, what's Leonard Fournette's brother doing these days? I don't even Lenard. know. Lenard. <laughs> 
His name is Lenard. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mm. Lenard Fournette. N L A N A R D. Mm. Lenard Fournette. Did not know that. That's a good also tribute. went to LSU. Maybe he works at Enterprise. They'll pick you up. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I, I guess I would probably take Dotson and 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 probably David Bell and. Maybe a couple other guys Wandale? before I would take Willis. I'm not no. taking Wandell over Willis. No. No, over Cook. Or over Cook, yeah. No. Okay. All right. Well, 2-1? Two, 2-1. One? No. Uh, one, Wandell goes there. I'm, I'm probably out on that. That's got to go back a little further but, for but me. I think, but I think this is at the spot where you're just like, you're probably just taking the guy you like the best. I think that's fair. I mean, and if and to me, like you could trade back some here. This is the spot. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'll, in in this in this format, you can't trade back. Not in the mock, but when you're on the, when you're doing FFPC and when you're doing, you know, most dynasty drafts give you like an eight hour clock or pause it at, at midnight and and give you that slow clock. And if you're starting up a league, do the slow clock. That way, you have time to massage the field because it's you have to like you. It's work. You have to. It's work to right, trade yeah. back. You have to get in there, especially, send offers, especially send in this texts, class. Right. Well, especially especially if you're in a in a in a league that you don't know anybody. Which uh, yeah, if for you start sure. playing in a lot of leagues, you're you're in that yeah. situation. In the home league where you can be text messaging with all your homies, and, right. and it's you know it's a right. little you could be kind of you might even know what they think about right. Some of these yeah. Guys. Once it's yeah. once it's you're doing it through email or a group me or whatever, and right. you don't know each other, like it, it does absolutely take a lot of two things you can do that are pretty easy though. Put into the group chat that you're willing to move back. Anyone that was wants to, willing to come up and move up for this pick, let me know because I'm interested in moving back. Let everyone know that, and then just fucking sit there for a minute. Also, I'd like just I sit don't... there because people might think that other people are talking to you, you know. And if right. someone does give you an offer, but you don't really like it, you come back and say, "Well, I got other stuff working. It's better than that." You know, you could just yeah. you could drum Play up the interest by bit. just fucking sitting there and waiting. Even if the bunch of fucking dickheads in your league are like, "Oh man, make a pick, make a pick, man! I wanted to get this thing over as fast as fucking possible." Like, I hate that shit. Just sit there for a minute, and some offers might start coming in. That's that's a way to find a trade partner. I like putting a deadline on some of the things as well, too, because then you build a sense of urgency a little bit as well, too. Yeah, I'll pick because in two the, hours. Yeah, because then the douchebag's like, well, just pick, just pick, just pick. No one wants to. Look, I said if I don't, if no one gives me an offer by one o'clock, one o'clock, yeah. I'm going to pick. And, right. if, and if you have a problem with that, then shut the fuck up. Yeah. Listen, guys, it's fucking Mother's Day. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I'm watching my kid. Shit. Right. So I will say that. Again, FFPC is just going off, and almost every single one of those drafts, this 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, 2-4, Jahan Dotson was available almost every single time. I'm okay with that. Is fantastic. So any any chance that I had once we got past the first round, I was and I didn't have one of those first 2-1 two, to 2-4 two, picks. Because every time he falls, that pick gets cheaper. Right. I, I kept trying to get in there, and a couple times I did. I came away and with, with three Jahan Dotsons uh, out of that that whole deal and one of them. Damn, I we just was, straight up took him at 112. I don't, I don't, I don't, hate, the, I don't hate Dotson. I, I don't like Dotson at 109. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's just it's silly. It seems how like your brain hates Dotson a little bit. Though. How your brain works when you're like, oh, I'm okay with him at, at 109, but I. That's so weird about it. But I'm not okay 112, you know, or vice versa. I'm not. I'm not okay at at uh, at 109, but I'm okay at 112. Like you know, uh, really, it's kind of semantics. You're just. I think it is to a certain. Right. I, I, I would rather have more Pickens, Watson, probably Willis in Superflex over Dotson. Cook and White were the two guys that were pushing everybody down. Um, in in the in that in that Dotson yep. uh, yeah I, area yeah, there, yeah. Rashad White and Cook have been going all, almost in every single. I would oh, I think it might be every single draft Ahead they went of, in either the first both of those guys went in the first round or like the first round and then two one or two two right at the turn there yeah um, and, and just about every single one of those so those guys are pushing guys down and then and then people will uh, come it seemed like Damian Pierce was getting pushed up. A he good went, bit. He went back to a spot where he's appetizing for me in this draft. Right. So let's let's keep it moving. Malik Willis goes here. That was you, Jay. Great pick. Yeah, I was. I was like, should I take Spiller? <laughs> or actually, it was Dotson. It was. I was about to take Dotson when I saw the pick. I was like, oh, I got Dotson's falling to me at two, two one. I almost just took Dotson, and then I was like, man, but this is super flex, and I never in my wildest dreams did it before the draft that I think I could get Kenneth Walker at one two and Malik Willis at. Two, two, yeah, and it's like I, you know, I don't feel that much. I don't know. I like I like the spot that he went to, and, and we had you know a conversation about this with Derek Brown, and and 
a bunch of people and people are on the fence and some people like it, some people don't. Some people are just out because of the third round draft capital. The talent and the, and the, and the ceiling are still there. And he went to a spot with, with stability and a good coaching staff and an organization that I like. And a quarterback who struggled and has it on a one-year deal, essentially. And, and nobody likes that quarterback. And if Willis does anything, if he shows anything well, people are going to be – it's the hype's going to build quick. And it's just, right. it just seems like a pretty good swing and super flex. I also like the him. fact that they're an organization who doesn't give a fuck what the norm is. And they'll come in and, and run the shit out of it and, and – Muck it up. Create an offense or create an offense that is kind of weird. And, hey, we're, we'll run, hey, we paid a third round for fucking Malik Willis. We'll run him into the fucking dirt. Yeah. What do we care? Like, we're, we'll figure this out. And like you said, that's pretty much the MO of the Titans. We're going to come into this game, we're going to muck it up, and then we're going to try to find a way to win in the end. And they've done, they've been very successful at that. Yeah. Well, my rationale of taking Wills here is even if he's a half decent quarterback, you're never going to get a starting quarterback in Superflex for a second round pick. Right. What potential starter? And now the, the offset of that is what I think, uh, is, which is a better argument for Ritter and Corral, is well, maybe the, the Titans are terrible this year and they'll be picking high again, which would I can't see essentially how that would, be the case. would make put, put a Titans lot of strain on that Willis pick. Yeah. But I just don't see them being that see, high. No. At, you know, no. They can't. I how mean, is the, the division they play in? They're going to guaranteed four wins playing the Texans and Jaguars, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah, potentially. And and they beat good teams like they, they just, right. They, they were the number one seed yeah, in the fucking cr- AFC, and yeah. they didn't have their best players for chunks of the season. I right. mean, they crushed right. the Rams on on Sunday Monday Night Football. I mean, they tore them apart. Yeah. It was over and it was over at halftime. Yeah, and and they they do well on special teams. They're just never. So, I yeah, would take that. Dotson over Willis for me. I got I got to take I got to take that. I got to take. I got to take Dotson. I almost did, um, and then I talked myself into Willis, and I figured it'd be a good discussion point as well. Yeah. So I'm I mean, taking Willis ten times out of ten over Dotson. Okay, I, I, I am. You gotta diversify a little bit. You got ten mocks. You better get a little bit of air. <laughs> well, I'm taking. I'm, I'm, I'll take them ten out of eleven times. Mock drafts. <laughs> yeah, but real drafts. You probably take them in superflex. Yeah, Willis. Okay. All right. I've, superflex. I've, superflex mock. Yeah. Superflex. 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 I think in the superflex drafts that I saw, it was typically two one to like two four was the Willis zone. Uh, oh, I'm happy with that all day. So, yeah, I, I think that's fine. In a lot of cases, it got taken out of my hands where I didn't have to make that decision, which is, is kind of nice. Um, but then there goes Spiller at 2-3. Um, Dotson at 2-4, which is a steal. Uh, you got to take Dotson over pretty much everybody that went off that board. And like I said, I can move Dotson up to 110 and take him over Pickens. Um, and then there goes David Bell. That was big co. Um, I, I like I like that pick just fine. Love it. He, he went off the board a lot of the times right in that range. Uh, in these drafts that we did uh, just kind of was getting shat on a little bit through the process and through the draft even and then gets popped picked off by Cleveland and I just feel like everything kind of shifted yeah and I, I I love that shot on on Bell right there don't hate it at all uh, should so, play the slot pretty well so now you're up yeah I mean I so I did a I forgot I did a 10 team a 10 team running back league and I got Algier at 405. Wow. Behind Ingram. Mm-hmm. Ingram went at 404 and I was so pissed. That, that's like end of the third in a 12-man? Yeah. So, yeah. Pick 35? Yeah. Um, but I just like the draft. I don't. I love the spot. I like the player. Um, you were high on Al G. Yeah. yeah. I had him coming as a in. top five, six running back coming in. So, okay. to take him as my RB4, that's fine. I, like I said, I love the spot. Um, what not, about Damian Williams and Cordell Patterson? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I you, you, mean, you mean a converted wide receiver and a guy who's now on like his fifth team, right? And he's be, old and has been pretty banged up. Is a is is a solid NFL running back when healthy? Yeah, you for know? sure. And and Cordero looked electric, but they didn't feed him the ball. Yeah, but he, he was he's he not was gonna, wildly efficient. That's the whole thing, right? And they're gonna need him in the passing game because they don't have Anybody. much to, anything a receiver. I mean, right? Yeah, they don't have Russell Gage anymore. Yeah. What do they have? Um, uh, Z- What's that guy's Olamade name? Zacchaeus. Yeah. Zacharias. Yeah. And, and uh, Auden Tate. And, and Zacchaeus. Drake London, baby. Man. Yeah. And, and Pitts. So uh, so you took Algier there. I think, I think most people probably would have taken I White. Would, I think I'd rather. Or I, Pierce. Yeah. I think I'd rather take the shot on Pierce over Algier. Damian Pierce or Alec Pierce? Damian. Uh, both. Yeah. Really? Both. I, and, and Definitely I, I, Alec. But I, de- I liked P- Damian Pierce more than Algier pre-draft. Okay. Uh, so, and, you know, the Houston landing spots 
also very enticing. It, um, it agreed. You know, it's it's Burkhead who get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And it's Marlon Mack, which I'm a big Marlon Mack guy, but this is a guy coming off his Achilles. Yeah. Who has never been the guy really. Um, so or a beacon of health for that matter. Right. And so you know, you know, he could fit in as a change of pace, and you could make the argument for Pierce of yeah. saying the same thing we just said about Jamison Williams and those other guys. Like he didn't dominate his, in his own team, and blah 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 blah. blah. And it's like, dude, there's a lot of situations where. Yeah, you know, I would just rather bet on the guy who rushed for sixteen hundred yards the last two years. Hey, and that's uh, that's fair. I just I liked what I saw from Pierce more than what I saw from Algier. I liked the receiving chops of Pierce better than Algiers. Um, and then you know, uh, I, I think I kind of like Houston actually a little bit more than Atlanta. Like as far as not having Cordero Patterson, although I'm on the max there, so I don't know. Um, so I, w- I would have taken either Alec or uh, Damian Pierce over him and probably Mechie as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian Robinson lands in a precarious spot, so I probably am mostly just not going to have him on my team, even though yeah. maybe you should. Um, so the next pick off the board is Ritter. Um, now with him you could and, and, and Corral, you, I think the argument is better for – those both of those teams you could see them picking in the top five so you got a third round quarterback and next year they could be picking in the top five so maybe i would say maybe you'd be a little scared of them i would say atlanta i would say atlanta and carolina more than more more than washington well and and more than uh tennessee for sure yeah 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 well that's what i was yeah kind of commenting willis willis seems like he's got a shot to be to be the future a guy for a little while yeah whereas it really could be pretty quick before atlanta nobody would be shocked if atlanta was picking one two no. and and the carolina panthers were picking one three one oh one one oh five yeah um so that definitely has to give you a little bit of pause what are your guys' thoughts on ritter here at two seven uh it's too too high for me even in super flex yeah i think i gotta push him down towards the end of that second round you know yeah. if you want to so you want to take him over the next, the third round guys, you know, Pierce, probably be fine. With Ty that, Davis but. Price, Alec Pierce, Ty Davis Price, Tyrion. I'm just going Ty. They got him Ty over here. Tyrion. Okay, we'll go with Tyrion. I just like the Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, that can't be how it's pronounced either, right? So it's how I mean that's phonetically what it is. Would you Tyrion? Would you rather have Alec Pierce or Price uh, or Ritter? Uh, probably Pierce. And then Ritter over Price. I think I might even take. Price. I just Ritter's just seems like he's just going to be a backup quarterback. Damian Pierce or Ritter. Pierce. Agreed. Mechie or Pier- or Ritter. Mechie. Mechie. Oh, we found. So he must yeah. really not like Ritter. Must really it's, just, not. it's it's exactly what you just said. It's exactly what you just said. I don't yeah. think Ritter's the long term answer there. Right. The, the the best thing that could happen is Ritter gets a chance. Either Mariota gets hurt, which is not out of the question, yeah. or he just plays well and gets on there and can show you a little bit and buys himself a year or two window. Hey, don't sleep on Felipe Franks. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I hate him. Maybe he's a nice guy, but... <laughs> you, you were about to say you hate him? Yeah. But he might be a nice guy. <laughs> but he lost me the, a lot of money. <laughs> the worst at Florida. No, I used to just strictly bet against yeah. that guy. Um <laughs> Seem to get a little better at Arkansas, but um, then Rashad White goes. That that's not definitely not happening. That's that's ridiculous value for what I've seen actually sure. take place in in uh, drafts. I've, I haven't I seen have, Spiller go before White any any draft. Yet. I have no idea why White is just getting so much love and appreciation. I know. Uh, I guess analytically, yeah, it really works. Uh, but I just. Like, but Lenny's there. Fucking Lenny's been rock solid, and if he, I guess he could be a little banged up, and you could throw some white in there. But and by the time just, White could take it over, Tommy probably won't be there. Yeah, then why do you care? Right, right, exactly. Like I mean, and and White's not a young. I guess you hate Leonard uh, Fournette. Rookie. Who me? No, like whoever's oh. taking Rashawn White. But it's it's great. Like it's he's just being pushed up into that first round, and I yeah. just don't really understand that, and that's what. Makes me be pretty excited for that back that that top end of the second round for guys like Dotson, Bell, uh, and then you could trade back a little further. Yeah, I mean, Spiller. I mean, I mean, me taking Algier here, I'm probably trading back to the two twelve 
and still yeah. getting Algier easily. We were we were at the two seven, not us, but it was going a super flex uh rookie draft. We have the guy took Kenny Pickett in the first round. We have Mitchell. Picked him up for a dollar at the end of last year. Mm. Strong uh, because it's a shorter it's FFPC, so shorter benches. Okay. Um and we traded into two seven, I believe, for Mitchell a three, a four. And picked up two seven and drafted Spiller, um, and so that was I wanted a chance at Spiller. I liked Spiller. This guy had a lot of picks. He he had made like six rookie picks already throughout the draft, and he had just taken Pickett. So Mitchell, nobody's given us anything for Mitchell. It's basically we paid a three, a four, and a dollar in Fab to yeah. get the two seven and take a shot on Spiller, who I like, and you know, we've. I, I talked Big Co into it, and I know I already knew Jason was into it, so you know, there wasn't a whole lot of talking in, and we've talked about it on this yeah. podcast. Like, there's there's a real world possibility that Austin Eckler holds out. Like, he's so cheap, and this is his last chance to get money. And like, what do you do? Like, your agent needs to tell you to be holding out. Like, you need yeah. to try to get a little bit more cash before. And, and how healthy is Austin Eckler be? How long have the cheap, the Chargers been trying to find somebody else? To play that role, who is plus in the receiving game, in my opinion, mm. and and a mm. pretty solid mm. running back, yeah, uh, all I, around. I think so. Spiller comes in as already better than Justin Jackson. Yeah, which Justin Justin Jackson plays well when he's healthy, but he can't stay healthy. Yeah. I agree. I mean, he he he. And then who's the other guy that they drafted last? The guy they picked up last year, Josh Kelly. No, they have don't they have another oh, guy? Uh, that Roundtree, just, Roundtree, old Larry. Yeah. No, yeah. I think Spiller. Spiller's immediately at the top Spiller. of that depth chart under underneath Eckler, and, yeah. and you know. I think Derek Brown said it when we had him on the podcast last week. Like, the Chargers are a playoff team. They want to get to the playoffs with a healthy Eckler. Yeah. So, like, you want to be able to have a sure. guy you can inject into there and take some, you know, take a roll, take some weight off of Eckler. So, I, yeah. you know, I'm I'm doing what I can in the middle of these seconds to get Spiller is basically the moral of that story. Yeah. Um, and I've and I've tried a lot, and I if he sticks around, which, you know, some drafts, I, one of the FFPC drafts is two hundred fifty dollar league. He went in the first round. Um, strong and you know he, he's been going in a lot of top of the second rounds so getting a little bit more respect out of some money leagues uh, which every league that I have in there is at least 250 um, so you know it's not you know it's not peanuts it's not like 20 50 dollar leagues it's you know those are guys who at least doesn't play doesn't for make, doesn't, money. doesn't necessarily make anybody a better player they just have more money they're so. more engaged right. probably uh, you would like to think so but you, not really well what? you want to win more they can so be you take running backs they can be uh, okay maybe so um <laughs> that's the running backs maybe they they uh they I bet did kenneth, do a lot. Did kenneth walker go one two in pretty much every draft yeah, yeah. see i mean i think that's just pretty because they're trying to hit, cause they're trying right to hit early because you because running backs score the most points and that's how you win and they're, they're supposed to, and can't happen for 10 years but that's how you win just not a whole lot of them and if, you, if a lot you're paying 250 dollars to be in this league you want to win soon sometime i need to win so i get because this is expensive yeah. yeah, I mean, we we won one last year with Christian McCaffrey not playing or like, Darren Waller, but we traded two Darren twos Waller. for J- Josh Jacobs at the right time, and yeah. then he helped bring us home. Kareem Hunt was doing some work for us, and then he went down, and you know, we had David Montgomery just murking, oh, doing another what David guy Montgomery who's disrespected. Does. Nobody likes that guy. Love, um, love so Monty. there goes White. Mechie goes at two nine, which haven't ended up with any Mechie yet. Um, Ty Davis price is pretty low in FFPC, so he's actually been kind of a steal. Um, So he hasn't really gone in too many second rounds. Me and Big Code just scooped him up in two separate third rounds. Um, But then I took Trey McBride next. Why'd you say Ty Davis price? Just because I was because I was thinking about him. Okay. Um, He didn't go in that 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 he could be up in this second round. Sure, a lot of people's uh, minds and and, yeah, I think I think this tier pretty solidly ends at. Um, actually, I, I, there's another guy who I would put in this tier as well, too. Who, a little teaser. Yeah. So I, I took McBride. This is tight end premium. He, he slid here FFPC-wise. I've had a lot of conversations with Big Co trying to take McBride, and it's really hard to pull the trigger on a 20-man bench. Yeah. Or a 20-man roster, rather. And and, and you need to be playing the Trifix, Triflex yeah. uh, version of FFPC because then there's an extra uh, flex and no kicker defense, so that right. twenty is actually twenty, right? Instead so of kicker, 18. you have to have a kicker defense, right? But in this case, where I can hold McBride, and usually I'm playing in a thirty man and a taxi squad situation because I like deep dynasty. Um, 
I have all, no I have no problem taking Trey McBride here. All of FFPC is tied in premium too, so it's right. still not the worst idea. But it's probably I it's get just what you're hard. It's a rookie really tight hard end. to roster somebody for a year or two when you know you have to, obviously you, some things would need to happen, and maybe McBride just comes in and lights the fucking world on fire. But yeah. it's just a, it, he's fallen in all of those drafts where as he was somebody that I was pretty excited about, but it's really hard to pull the trigger on him on a shorter bench. And even here, he fell he fell pretty far back, like almost into the third round. With McBride, um, which you know he's he can play in line, he can move outside, he can kind of do everything. Caught ninety balls, so there's there's a lot to like there for sure. He was definitely the definitely the tight end one. Yeah, um, so uh, I kind of just took him there because he he was there, um, and then Brian Robinson goes, and then Pierce goes to end that round. Which you know thought about Pierce a little bit there, thought about Davis Price, and then really thought about Alec Pierce there a good bit. Would anybody take? Alec Pierce over some of these guys for sure. Alec Pierce is there's no chance he hasn't even gone off the board in this mock up to where we've got right now, and he's not making it. I don't think he'll make it past two six. Like I, he didn't make it that. Far. He was always getting taken pretty pretty mid second round, right? Yeah, me and Big Co traded up at one point and grabbed him pretty late in the second round. That's um, fine. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm not. Good value I'm not going first half of the round with Pierce. First half of the second round with Pierce. Yeah. It seems like there's a good bit of projection there with him. For sure. Yeah. I'm Just t- like I'm Christian take, Watson. I'm probably taking Pierce over Robinson and TDP. Yeah, I can, I can, I can get down with that. Um, I think me and Big Co took a decent amount of Pierce, and then actually Lazard was in that um in those drafts a decent amount so we ended up kind of okay. taking him in a lot of third rounds and then at one point we did take Ty Davis Price over Pierce just cuz we had just to diversify Alex Pierce, just to diversify yeah. a little bit yeah um and you know he is just an injury away <laughs> it's money over there <laughs> definitely not money over there they need they need some um, money they need but help. Pittman Alec Pierce needs is help. interesting to me. Seems pretty polarizing. He's been kind of a pretty wide range of outcomes. Through, and really, the second round is just a pretty wide range of outcomes. Yeah. Um, the, the end of that first round varies a good bit, but it's the same guys. Sure. Seems like, you know, most of that, sec- especially you throw super flex in there. It gets all sorts of, you know, David Bell pretty consistently at the top over there. Um, and Spiller pretty consistently at the top over there. Uh, but Wandell still available in like the mid thirds in these FFPCs, yeah. which he went two one here. That was a s- spicy, a spicy pick. What are your thoughts on Wandell? Where's he got to go for you? I'm probably starting to think. But about he's him. hanging around in the third. I'm starting to think about him there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean third for sure. I'll take this. I think you almost have to. Yeah, yeah. He, I don't think he'll make it that. Would you trade far. back in for Wandell mm, if he's hanging around at three probably five? Probably not. Three five, three five. I'll, I'll see what what it's gonna take. Can I give you my three twelve and a four? Or what? What? what like, can I give you? A I'm three not doing first. I'm not doing that deal. First of all, <laughs> can can I give you? I'll trade you I, next year's second for your three for my three hundred five. That's too much. I'll trade you my twenty twenty four second for your three hundred five. <laughs> just move it back. I literally baby. just did that. I just traded my twenty twenty four second. You see, it's all over the place. Yeah. If, if there's people who that, that if there's guys on the board who people still value then the second round is probably in play and if it's not and it's everybody's values are a little different you know the three and the four might get it done for the third just to say hey i don't like any that, that person who's on the clock hey i don't really like anybody here i'll take i'll just take the three and the four next year sure yeah they'd, so, rather, they'd, they'd rather kick the can i'll down send that offer and see if you're interested if yeah, you want to sure. move back you'll, we'll figure something out yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. want to give up my 23 second so ty davis price goes three one down with that I think that's a it's, good it's, shot. It's Probably, fine. It's you, fine. You swap Pierce and, and Price. Yeah. I didn't think Pierce would make it to me at three two, and I yeah. was excited to take him. I had him in my queue, and then I think I actually got auto picked there. I think I missed uh, my <laughs> yeah, hour you, yeah, my hour did. long clock, and luckily I had him in the queue. Yeah. And he was probably not at the top because I don't order my queue, but he everyone else got taken, and he was just still there. I think he's probably the top of ADP as well too, at that point. Maybe. So Kyron Williams then goes next. Probably a little high on him there, but yeah. I mean, for the Rams, Hendo's out of there. Didn't test particularly well, but the field he game kind of tells you 
something a little different. Definitely could come in there as the pass catching running back. Right. And I mean, it's not like there's no questions around Acres. For sure. And Sony just signed with, with the Dolphins, yeah. What about Shout J- out to JK Dolphins? What about Jake Funk? Yeah, the Funk, the Funk man. Sure. <laughs> uh so then Zamir White goes, would would you guys take mm. Zamir White or mm. uh mm. Williams? Um I'd have Zamir White over Robinson. Davis Price. Ooh. Probably McBride, too. Mmm. And premium? Yeah. All right. What yeah. about Damian that, Pierce? Uh, probably probably Pierce, too. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm probably not. I'm with give, you on all of those. I'm, I'm give with me you the, there. Give me, give me Zeus. Woo. Yeah, I love it. Fuck I th- yeah. I think I might take Pierce over Zeus. Let me get Zeus. Just for the pass catching prowess. Um, that's possible, and the and the workload that's possible with Pierce. I'm, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to push Pierce up to the first half of the second round. D Pierce, that is Houston Texans Pierce. <laughs> yeah, um, so I think that's too much. I think if you get to the back, oh for half sure of that, then yeah, I'm down, even someone but, who's down down on Pierce, uh, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm taking Zamir White over Robinson and Davis Price ten times out. Okay, very often. I think I would. Just, I think I would still take. I, I the only one I would take him over is probably. Uh, William is definitely Williams. Um, I, I would take Pierce and Ty Davis ahead of TDP Z- Zamir. Yeah. What's the What's the rationale there? Uh, well, the, the rationale for Pierce is is just that I like the situation sure. better, and uh, like I said, some pass catching, and then TDP's just as a cheap Niners back. If you're going to give me the guy who's potentially second fiddle to somebody, whereas Zamir's probably second fiddle to Josh Jacobs in some regard, um, even though they just didn't renew his didn't re- renew the fifth year but, but he's still there like and that sure. doesn't mean that they can't re-sign him like yeah um he still could potentially be there and and prices you know he's in that niners backfield in the niners rotation and i know i know how they're partic- going to use the running back whichever one they decide to give it to is going to be a guy you want to start in fantasy for the most part yeah whereas the raiders i'm not sure it's a whole new regime um you know, they they seemingly just keep bringing in running backs. Um, and, you know, I, I just I feel better about the 49ers. And, you know, if there is an injury, obviously White could be great, too, if there's an injury to, to, to Jacobs, who haven't, hasn't been there. He's but one injury away from dominating that backfield. I'll, I'll take I'll take the, the shot on the Niners over the over the Raiders. Homer. Uh, sure. You could you could say that. But I think, you know. I you do, don't usually I do, do speak the Homer thing pretty objectively with I do with Clemson, but uh, <laughs> and then that gets me in trouble trying not to be a Homer. Uh, but yeah, I gotta take Zamir, man. I just like him better as a running back, and I think he's got burst. That, I don't. I think that the Raiders should pay Josh Jacobs, but maybe they won't. But they don't. But they don't really want to play him now. Like they did. They lean on him. He was like RB. Six the last half of the last season. I mean, they and they start throwing it to him and yeah, it great. Yeah, whole new coaching regime, obviously, and, and GM and everything's in there. So, and they just took Zeus, you know. Yeah. So, the writing could be on the walls for Josh Jacobs and Zeus, but it's pr- probably going to take a year, you know. Yeah. So yeah. you got to you got to wait, but man, he's just a phenomenal I mean, I mean, dude. Zamir White in a in, on a cheap contract in a McDaniel system. Yeah, I mean, it's, I was a big Zamir guy. He was probably the RB four for me. Uh, Definitely pre-draft. Pre-draft. Yeah. Favorite, favorite, third, fourth. Uh, so yeah, they're good. Then there's Kevin Harris went to New England. Big because a South Carolina fan. I don't think anybody's necessarily taking him in the third round. Could potentially be the best running back in this class, according to to some people. If if right. Um, but are there some people Big Co? <laughs> no, actually, I've never even I've never even heard Big Co talk about Harris, so that's usually a good sign. Um, uh, but a Gamecocks fan is, is mostly that, the quarterback. Hey, he led the SC in rushing in 2021. Yeah, and then you're up here with with Sammy Howell. Oh, love the Sam Howell pick here. In Woo! The third. Love it. What what's 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 the infatuation? I mean, you're super flex. You're never going to quarterback cheaper than you are in the rookie draft. Mm-hmm. Why not Corral? I mm. preferred Hal over Corral on film. Mm-hmm. I think the situation's better. Um, There's no chance Corral could be good being drafted in the third round, so you know that Sam Howell can't be good being drafted in the fifth round. Exactly. Zero. <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> probably garbage. I mean, I don't want to even draft him. I should have just taken. Yeah, I mean. I yeah, that's yeah, basically why we're asking joke. you why you did that. Yeah. What the hell? 
Because <laughs> last year, Sam Howell, I mean. Are they just ruining the show? See, what the heck? We're definitely, I'm someone's fucking, hating that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> la, I mean, last year, I mean. Hit me with a comment. Even negative comments help. Ah, joke's on you. Do you remember when <laughs> Sam Howell was lighting it up as a freshman? What, yeah. what happened to that Sam Howell? Yeah, right. No, I, I mean, granted, Christian Hackenberg lit as a freshman, too, so. I think I'd have to give the nod to Corral over, and, and I agree with you. I, I, I think I had, for as little as I had really them parceled out with the, the quarterbacks after Willis and, and Pickett, um, I think I was leaning Hal for sure because, you know, you saw some glimpse of, of some really, really good stuff from him, and then the O-line got worse and the weapons got worse, and Sam Howell didn't necessarily show great, great improvement, but there's some, there it is there, and, you know, but Corral seems like he's got a pretty easy path to potentially getting on the field this year. Where at, but it might not last. That's my concern. I felt like I, with Hal, I felt like I have a better shot of him being there two years, three years down the road. I mean, versus Corral. Yeah. The commanders could be picking Bryce Young next year. I don't see that happening. But it is, it could happen, but they're probably going to be better. Because they're going to be so good. That defense, no, I did, no, I think their defense isn't bad. Right. I they think took Wentz, a step back last year defensively, yeah. but I feel like I think he, Wentz is serviceable. He's not he's right. not butt cheeks, but he's not he's also not Aaron Rodgers. He's not as bad as everybody makes him out to be, but he's not you know he's not yeah. you know Aaron has good. He's not a good looking pair of Clooney's though, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, it's fair. Um, so yeah, no, Clooney I is mean, where the ass meets the thigh and yeah. forms a crease. In case you didn't know, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the it's uh, a medical term. Yeah, good to know. Clooney's had, had to teach our wives anatomy when they were in med school. <laughs> Or the other way around. I don't know. Perineum's also a fun one. Great one. Great um, one. So Sam Howe goes. Probably going to be some hate. I know Derek Brown, who we had on, he's, he would hate that pick. Um, can't well, pick that guy because there's no way he could be good because he's picking the fifth round. I mean, the stats are stats. Percentages are percentages. I got the sheet of percentages. That's it. He didn't like him on film either. It was, to be fair, Derek Brown, isn't. he, he, he mixes a combo of things. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. didn't like him on film pre-draft. Uh I, I don't I don't I don't dislike it. it. Was we're in the third round of a super flex. Exactly. That's kind of that's kind <laughs> yeah. of what I was saying too. Was Great. Like, I'm deciding between Sam Howe, Matt Crowell, or Romeo Dubs. Right. That was now, Dubs. The, Dubs. Damn it. Dulwich goes we next. We had this conversation last time. I'm gonna will it to <laughs> Dulwich goes next to Denver, and uh, that could be that could be great, and that's a fine stab in, in tight end premium in the third round. Uh, I like stabbing on tight ends after we get past the the second round in tight end premium, and seeing if you could find some something in there. Um, everybody does need a tight end, and if there's any hype around him and he starts catching some balls, probably pretty tradable, probably at an elevated price. Um, and then Tolbert here is a guy who yeah. definitely uh, I think should be pushed up a good bit here. Uh, maybe even some people as high as the end of the second round. Yeah, uh, but I'd yeah, probably but have him over Kyron and Kevin Harris. I would probably I would take and him over I would take Dulcich him over too. Dolchich, Harris, White, Williams. Why do you hate Samir White? I don't hate Zamir. I just told you I really like Zamir White. I just I got to I got to push him down a little bit and and take take the shot on on the receiver and and Tolbert. It's just I feel like you're playing some mental gymnastics here. No, no, no. I I, I mean I, you're I mean you're liking you're liking Spiller for the same reasons that you don't like White. What do you mean? You you're worried about the guys who are possibly leaving. Yeah, well, I mean yeah. Sure. I just there's I, a lot more to like with with Spiller too being having all those catches on his resume. Sure, right. and so Zamir, you know everyone, Zamir. It, it's going to be harder for people to be on the Zamir train, I think, than it is for some of these other guys. But I can take Zamir White a round and a half later after I take Spiller. Right, which is fine. Like I'm, I'm saying, like I, I want to take Zamir White. I, I really do want him on my team. He's just I got to get past the chunk of guys here before I can go ahead and, and Tolbert. I think needs to be pushed up here, uh, you know, definitely in front of like I said those three running backs that we just talked about. If you want to take Ty Davis Price or Tolbert over Ty Davis Price, I think some people are doing that. Yeah. Um, do we take Vilas Jones over Zamir White? What? No. No. I forget who we took. No. Oh, maybe McBride. We took McBride. Yeah. For what? I wanted to take Zamir, and you were like, "We gotta take." Oh yeah, McBride. Yeah, I gotta take McBride for sure. Tight end premium, got to. 
but does does that really matter? Yeah, if he's if he's gonna catch, if he's gonna be a volume if he catches ninety balls in a season, it absolutely matters. The volume tight ends and tight end premium a hundred percent matter. Like, but is he gonna like be when a- when Darren Waller got his volume? He was not only the tight end two behind Kelsey or whatever it was, but he was the wide receiver like two behind Devontae Adams. I just don't see that upside with McBride of him being a elite tight end. I think he's gonna be. He's going to top out as a... Just needs to be a volume pass catcher, and then we're good. Yeah. In, in an offense that has potential for some sort of volume pass catcher, Nuke isn't getting any older or any younger, and it's just got popped for steroids. Like, Ertz has got two more years and then probably out, which I do like Ertz, um, but then it's who? I mean, they, I guess they got Hollywood now. Um, Rondell Moore. And Rondell, which TBD. They, you know, if they, if you want to use Rondell properly, he, maybe he was I a get second round group. wide receiver, so he's got to be good, right? Um, but I, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take a stab on the on the premium potential tight end in this league over a fourth or fifth round receiver that's, you know, on the Raiders that I just don't know what they're gonna do, right? I mean, to me, that makes some sense. I don't especially, know what they're gonna do with Josh Jacobs, especially a guy who I mean, Ward's Amir White. Like I don't know how long Amir White's gonna be a part of what they're doing. I, I think he'll be good. I, I like the player a lot, but if you're gonna tell me a second round tight end who's has a 90 catch on his previous resume in a season, like I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta take that guy. Yeah, uh, I'd. I can't argue. I just with don't it. see the upside with McBride. I think he's a fine tight end. I just don't. I just don't think he's ever going to be in the upper echelon of tight ends. And and at that point, I don't really give a shit about tight ends. Then yeah, I mean that's that's, that's the way that's the way I play. Right. Whether it's tight end premium or non tight end premium, I don't really care. If I don't have one of the top five six guys, then I'm just going to take whoever. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. But that's that's why I'm taking the stab on him because I do think like you say he, you think he has an upside to be a top. Yeah, five I mean or, you just don't catch ninety balls as a tight end in college. It's just I mean like, he was the not, only thing in Colorado. He was the whatever. only thing in Colorado. Okay, State. cover him then. He was the, the only thing in Colorado State. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying like there's there's he can play in line. He can play. He can move. He can play outside. He can kind of do a little bit of everything. He can give you some red zone targets. Like I, I just there's no way that I'm not taking him. Over over Zamir White, I, I just, if Zamir White would have got drafted in the second round, maybe we're now a little bit more saying, All "Hey, right. we got Zamir." But Zamir White going in the fourth or fifth round, wherever he Bad went, draft capital. You got you got it. I mean, you got to play that a little bit into things. I'm not saying you know, just like I'm not going to take so your sp- draft capital queen. I'm not going to take Spiller at the first six picks, but I'm going to do everything I can to get Spiller in the middle of the second round. Um, and being on on the Chargers, and- that's making adjustments post draft. Based um, on draft capital. And Zamir White would have been a player at the end of the first round for me. Right. Pre draft. Like I would have where would have had where would have two, he had to, he had to go to? Houston? There sure. Were so few landing spots that were uh, that were if, appetizing for if, running if backs. If he would have landed in a spot where I, I feel like there was a better path to volume quicker, I would I would be faster to take him. And a month ago I would have swore that the Raiders are gonna sign Josh Jacobs to a long deal, but yeah, I mean, just because just because you don't doesn't and, mean that you're not going to bring this guy in. Like, yeah. yeah, like I mean, Josh certainly Jacobs. puts a sour taste in Jacob's mouth, though. Yeah, but I mean, money fixes everything, so for sure. Is that why Debo started falling the Niners back? I for don't know. Sh- damn, damn straight it is. No idea. That's but, a good sign, right? Yeah, I should, it's I today's day so. and age. That I'm going to I'm going to start unfollowing my employer on on social <laughs> media. I guess I start following them first. Yeah. All right, so then I don't want nothing to do with my Romeo player. Dobbs goes next, the three nine. Uh, that Tolbert shot at three eight is fantastic by by JMW there. I think that's just outstanding value um, for the prospect of South Alabama, big target, fast. He was um, late on the Senior Bowl. Sure. Um, so I think Tolbert's got to move up. Great, do, great uh, dominator rating, breakout age. South Alabama, baby. Yep. Let's go. Uh, then Dobbs comes in here at three nine. Let's go. I think that's in the once you're in the third round. These are the kind of shots that I'm okay with taking. Um, you're gonna give yeah, a guy who's at least, uh, you know, you got Christian Watson who's maybe potentially raw and a, and a great athlete, and, he, and then you got a guy who's like a little bit more polished of a, of a finished product, maybe at receiver who's played a little bit more, has a bunch more catches under his belt, uh, probably does a, a few more things well. Uh, right now, as far as Christian Watson and, and hey, give me give me this shot on the Packers. Just like I'm going to take the cheap shot on the Niners guy, I'm going to take the cheap shot on the Packers guy. Sure. And the fourth fourth round capital is still good enough to to keep you intrigued. 
the same round that Zamir White was drafted. Yeah. For, well, I mean, sure. But, I, but like, I'm not not taking Zamir White at 3-4. I just would have pushed some of these other guys ahead of him before you taken him. Uh, so that's all I'm saying. Some of these other guys would have been pushed back for me. Like, that's it. That's the Kyron. For sure. Um, yeah. And then Kevin. I think Corral is, is I took him there. I, like you said, it's the end of the third round. Sure. It's a super flex. Yeah. It's a good value on Corral. I think he's got a, a, a an okay path to getting on the field at some point th- this year. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. Sam Donald was okay in spots last year before pre shoulder injury or whatever he had was, was just fine. But I mean, maybe Corral could get on the field. It's a shot. Some people might say that's a stupid play and you should I think, just I think at some point Carolina, else. I think at some point Carolina is just like, let's see what we got in him. Maybe and maybe shit. Maybe he starts week one. I don't know, um, but maybe I should have taken the shot on Shakir or uh, some of these other guys. Justin no, I, Ross I think I think or Corral. Ingram or yeah, I think I think Corral gives you. I mean, somewhat of upside. I mean, the only player there's a couple players here left that have some upside, but yeah, I mean Shakir probably being one of those guys, sure, and he yeah. went next fifth rounder, I believe, to Buffalo. There's some fun stuff there, and he's in Buffalo, so that's a fun landing spot. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't hate that. And then Woods here as the tight end, I'll take that shot all day long. Uh, don't mind that at all. Uh, that's Indy, uh, the, the uh, tight end out of Virginia. He's gone a little earlier than that in some drafts. There's there's some upside to be had with, with Woods. Um, Super athletic. Right. So, you know, I'm I'm down with that. You're Are you are you out on that? Cause it's, nope. No, you're in on that? Nope, it's fine. Just, just got to be – another round before you're taking the, the tight end shots. I'm just, I'm just would rather take the shot on the running back than the tight end. What about Kyle Pitts? Where, where were you with Kyle Pitts? I mean, he was obviously the tight end one, but no, but, but like how but high were you, were you taking him in the, in the tight end premium? I think I drafted him in one league. I think I drafted him at like one Oh six. No way. Yeah. No league. Did it, did he follow one six? No way. Do you mean to find it? You had to take him. You had to take him one, 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 two, or you weren't you weren't going to get him in any league I ever saw. Yeah, well, I mean, it, pre, I pre also only play in most tight end premiums, um, and I know in FFPC, like he was one, 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 two. I guess if it wasn't tight end, if premium, it's tight end premium, maybe, yeah, it was tight end premium. Ooh, that's a you definitely. That's a, that's seen. fantastic value there. Yeah, for you, you had to take him at one yeah. six. You were jumping and up I and had, down. In that league, I had um, Waller, and I had a bunch of other guys as well too. And I was like, I can't not take him. Right. So then Justin Ross goes at 4-1. That's just nothing but upside. I feel like I, if you want to shoot it at the back of the third for Justin Ross, I guess so. For all those teams to pass on him, right. Nobody the drafted medical him. just has to scare me enough to not be like, hey, I got to take some of these other guys that I know finished their college career and I feel good about it. Like I've seen some people say probably the best undrafted free agent signing ever with the most talent. Probably so. Uh, but still. Went to the Chiefs. There's, Everyone loves there's that. There's some. There's some shit you don't really enjoy about Justin Ross' health and the fact that the NFL, you know, the NFL is allowed to tell you they don't like or like a guy. Right. Um, I think, I think end of the third's probably a little soon. I think even probably right there is a little soon. But I mean, if you want, I, so you wouldn't take him at four two if he was there. I probably w- would. I probably wouldn't have. No. I mean, I, he probably wasn't even on the screen. I'd have to you have to scroll down pretty far to find them unrestricted free agents in the sleeper app. So I pro- and I'm thinking that I'm assuming he's probably going to go undrafted in full round rookies drafts. So you, you might. I, know, I took him. him at, I took him at four or three in a fourteen teamer. I've seen him going. I think just about. I mean, every, that's pretty much every, un- every league. I mean, that's so at the far. end of the fourth. Yeah, and the fourth round is typically where he was. Yeah. living. I'm fine. And I'm, I'm. I would target him in the fourth. Yeah. All right, so you're up next. You took Pierre Strong. Yeah, I didn't know what to do there. I wanted to take – I want Ingram for some reason. But Pierre, you know, I like Pierre Strong's game, and Angelo's real big on him coming in. And, you know, I, I probably, no matter what team, I have one of those New England running backs already on my squad, whether it's Ramondre or, or Damian Harris, because I like both those guys and would pick them up when I could. And so it's not the worst to grab like another the, one of them in the fourth round. I like I mean, the player – much better than I like strong much better than Ingram as a player but I like the path to carries a whole lot more for Ingram so it's just kind of one of right. those what and when Ingram do? goes right after I pass on him it's like ah because right. I, I Ingram to for me is like a real big fourth round target I see took Keontae him the, and, took him to the third round of a, of a that would but this that, that leaves also a quarter point per carry as well too so you would where 
where did you pick? You took you had three six. Yeah. No consideration I was hoping for him there. At or, three six, mm-hmm. I I was doing a, doing a. I would have in real life. I would have considered him a lot more, but I was doing a um uh, an experiment to see if he came back to me at four okay. or six. Didn't quite make it. No. Four three he goes, but you're. I know you were a fan. Huge fan. Um, and then a little late on the capital, but a, 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 with late capital, best scenario possible. Sure. Yeah. If Zamir White lands in Arizona, do you feel better about him than in For than sure. Vegas? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Connor. Connor's great. And the league, and, and in the league, I the league I took uh, Ingram at three six. I also have Connor as well too. Yeah. So I felt like I was double. Sure. It was it was doubly worthwhile for me to. I love the player, and I have his, and I have his, um, the starter ahead of him. So sure. So then Thornton goes four four. I guess at some point you got to take the swing four yeah. four on, on a four two guy. Sure. Yeah. I mean at this point, yeah. But you know draft capital matters. Um, Billy Zappy goes next because just <laughs> Bailey. Zappy, Bailey Bailey whatever. He's irrelevant. For me, anyway. Hey, he threw. He was. He he set the record uh, last oh, year. Oh yeah, for, the hill. The what, the hilltoppers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would have taken Hassan Haskins over. Uh, I would not have taken Zappy at any point of this draft. Yeah. Do you think Big Co got auto pick there? I think he just saw a quarterback to the Patriots and probably just took this took the swing. I mean, I don't know sure. what, what he was doing there, but sure. I like Haskins as a as a fourth round swing. Yep. Targeting um, targeting him in a lot of fourth rounds. Eighty two. Calvin Austin here coming up in the fourth round. Yeah, I mean, he's interesting at least. Interesting player, little smaller type of guy. I mean, well, I, mean special teams I would much them, rather have Watson at 4 or 7 than Wandale at 2 1. They're similar players. Austin? Austin? Yeah. Aust- Austin and Wandale, yeah. Okay. Two and I a mean, half w- rounds later. Just Wandale landing in a much better situation to, to actually maybe play for you this year. Whereas Austin probably going to be special teams in, for a, this crowd, year. in a crowded room. Yeah. I mean, they're saying that it's unlikely the Steelers are going to resign. Yeah, Deontay. Deontay. Deontay yeah. yeah, that's going to be come down to price. That's... Well, you, you don't make Claypool make the pick for your replacement. <laughs> um, so then Beatty goes. That's fine with me. I like Beatty. I like. I mean, I'll take the dart throw there. I'm not a huge fan of Beatty, but at four or eight, that's fine. I like. That. I know you're I like you're that. a big fan. Yeah. Then then big fan. Uh, Otten goes next. I can't tell you that I know too much about him. Thor had him as his tight end too. Mm. All right, and he goes in a good spot too. I mean, decent he, spot. Not not Gronk, all. Gronk not back yet. No, lost OJ Howard. Nope. He doesn't want to work all those extra days. He's just wait, show up, catch touchdowns, make some sixty nine jokes. Yeah. Uh, so Tampa, Tampa's decent spot, decent shot at a, at a tight end there. I probably well. I, Probably would have to do some more research on Otten, but I, for, I would, I like Isaiah likely a good bit. Now, the uh, Ravens took two tight ends. Kohler was one of them. He he ends up going for. I was surprised here. at how poorly likely tested. Yeah, that's not at all what he looks like on the field. I mean, you saw um, that when we had the like ninety-five yard touchdown oh, yeah. pass, and he, he was he's just got some juice. Yeah, um, that was so, interesting. Um, I'm trying to get likely on free agent pickups. You're or likely, the last you're, you're pick likely a, to get him. Yeah. Uh, I took Velas Jones at four ten. I just feel like at that point, yeah, you're draft capital queen. So give me, yeah, give me, give me the shot on the guy that the but quarterback, just, he, the that's... quarterback, and the GM sat down together and they were like, hey, we're gonna be picking around here. Here's the guys that could be available, and this was the guy that they circled and wanted. Can do a lot of different things for you. Uh, yeah, he was a grown man playing against some some younger guys, I guess, but he ran well. He's bigger. Uh, he can kind of be a little bit of gadgety. He can play on special teams for you. That can help you earn a role. Um, took a shot on 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 Jones there, um, and then Kohler goes, who actually had an outstanding pro day. Who was kind of a guy who I thought would be pretty high in this tight end class for a little while, and then all of a sudden just wasn't. And then had the pro day that was really what really good. And Baltimore took both of those guys, yeah, uh, kind of right next to each other, just about. Um, so. Baltimore seemingly getting rid of Hollywood, bringing in a bunch of tight ends. They have like, they have like four or five tight ends now. Going to be in a lot of bigger personnel packages, seemingly. At least that's what they're kind of telling you. I think Greg Roman is a terrible offensive coordinator. You would and know is is good for the first little bit, and then just doesn't keep it creative enough, um, and and kind of gets a little stale. So we'll see what what their game plan is there. And then honestly, I. Uh, 
I don't know too much about Isaiah Pacheco here. Pacheco. Pacheco. Nothing about him. Had a great pro- had a what great combine. He went yeah. to Rutgers. Rutgers. That's all I knew that's about. That's about him. all I got him about him too. Okay. I had Jerome Ford in my queue. That would. Hey, you're taking a shot, Kansas City uh, lamp, as we like to call him. You know, whatever yeah. in him, he's on Kansas City. I guess almost, yeah, almost Mr. Irrelevant there. Throw a throw a net at him, catch that beautiful butterfly. You take Jerome Ford. Sure. You're not a Jerome Ford guy, I don't think. No. At the at four twelve, come on. Come where on. where for, who who even drafted Cleveland? Cleveland. Cleveland. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the I'll take the I'll take Ford over Pacheco. I want to make sure I get likely and, uh, but Pacheco, sure, I like the name. Good name. Pacheco. All right. So, got through four rounds of a tight end premium super flex mock here. Um, enjoyed it. Some good discussions in there. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Rate the podcast five stars. Don't be an asshole and give us, you know, four. one or two. Or if you, don't, if you don't like it, just fucking listen to something else. Yeah. <laughs> Jerks. But do hit me with that negative comment because it, it, you know, five, helps, st- five star with a negative comment. It helps the algorithm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, bring it. Come, come on, come on with it. Come on, finish. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Go to the Revelry Brewing Company dot com. Revelry Brewing Co dot com. I'll throw a link up. There's one in the description. Cop a t shirt. Soft. It's fresh. Rep your boys. You know, I know you guys don't want to tell your friends about us. Why would you? But. You know, hook your boys up. We've been we putting in work. Let me, let me rep the brand, and, and it's, it's, it's a strong T-shirt. So it's good beer too. Yeah, if you're in the town, good beer. We got a uh, a nice super flex tight end premium industry mock uh, in the works right now, where we're gonna grab a bunch of different guys around the industry and have them talk about their picks. It's in the fourth round right now. We've got Ryan McDowell and. Uh, the Dynasty Nerds and Derek Brown, who was just on the show, and Angelo and Kane Fossil, Troy King, um, Troy King uh, lots of guys, uh, Jeff Bell, uh, lots of guys all throughout the industry here. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. Uh, be interested to talk about those guys. And uh, so be on the lookout for that. It's going to be a motherfucker to coordinate, but yeah, we're going to have them we'll all get on. It. We'll get it there. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace.